Oh, we're back again. Lo and behold, we don't have a Beth. You guys put your webcams on, Zoe. Jim is here. Hello. Hello. Oh. And I saw her face, and now I am a believer. Hmm. That was not a trace of doubt in my mind, for I'm in love. Ooh. <laughs> what happened? Akab, this is this is the third stream. <laughs> to become Twitch partners, our aim is to produce a third show, and it's just. It's a barber just it's me, Ted, me, me, Ted, Will, and Josh <laughs> performing a barbershop quartet while the stream while the stream crashes. Oh, anyway, yeah. anyway Up the we, boys. Was, we were saying, me and James met in law class. Beth met James through college. We and started then, yeah. an RPG game with me, James, and Beth, and then Josh joined, and that's how we all know each other. Invited him along. Things it's all very, of, it's all very incestuous. Things got out of hand. Um, Lloyd, yes, it is indeed that particular uh, role play, and um, I met, <coughs> I met James through Games Workshop, but I didn't know that we sort of knew each other. Yes, I, I didn't know worked, we knew each other until we knew each other together. more. Um, and I, I knew James's older brothers. Um, unfortunately. Gentlemen and scholars uh, that they are. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I sense a slight bit of sarcasm there, James. Mm. It's just rumour. <laughs> and then, uh, what I, happened I, then? I recall me trashing you at Warhammer 40,000 when we first met. Seems to, seems to float into my memory. Um, but yeah, that, that's uh, probably because James has been drinking. Uh, and the only reason, because Necrons will always win. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, don't get stuck. <laughs> okay. okay, moving we swiftly can, on, yes. otherwise this is going to derail horribly. Okay. Uh, yes, then I introduced Josh to the roleplay group. He was quite reluctant at first, and then everything got out of hand. He fed bacon to Beth's character, and it really went downhill from there. <laughs> I, it, it's we, true. We, I our relationship flourished entirely on the fact that my roleplay character kept her roleplay character supplied with wine and bacon that were all stolen. That was all stolen, and then we found Ted on the internet. We did. I'll have. Oh, also Lloyd in the chat. I'll have you know that I went in uh, to Games Workshop just this weekend and tabled someone turn three and then promptly left. So I am back playing dwarves again. Okay, so worry. what is our biggest struggle with role-playing? This is a good question. I think we should start with Will. <laughs> biggest struggle with role-playing. Uh, I think staying in character is always a tough one. Um, and separating player character knowledge is pretty huge. And when it's done wrong, I think it lessens the fun. So I always like to think whether I'm playing a PC or an NPC, uh, I'm an actor. <laughs> and I can, only, I can only move, think and feel as that person does. And so stepping out breaks the illusion to the audience, which is other players, players and, of course, the stream. So, yeah, I think staying in role is probably the biggest struggle that you can have as a role player. Yeah? I think for us especially, because we all know each other, the biggest thing for us is, like, in between seeds, all the in-jokes and <laughs> the all the pissing banter. about. <laughs> yeah, and all the banter, because we all know each other. Um, I think it can get a little bit out of hand sometimes. Yes. Um, like 20 minutes later, we haven't even finished that scene. And it's like, mm. <laughs> this has you, happened Josh? multiple times. I I think um, expecting the wrong thing uh, when the unexpected happens and befalls. We've had so many occasions uh, which have both. Um, Screwed over Will in the long term. We had uh, we had a, a simple travel mechanic that should have oh, took, taken 20 minutes from us to get from point A to point B, <laughs> and it ended up in turning into three several hour long episodes where we were shipwrecked. Uh, several of us nearly drowned and were decapitated. Um, I summoned rocks. My character nearly got keel hauled. <laughs> I, I discovered geomancy and summoned rocks from the earth. It's all true. It's all true. What about and you, I was stabbed Sorry. in the jugular with broken glass. That did also happen, yeah. <laughs> Good old clumsy Jim. Um, so, James. I think mm. my biggest, biggest, it's very simple, for my, I think for my biggest struggle with the times I've GM'd is certainly confidence, although that's kind of building up over time. Um, as a player, as Beth said, because we all know each other, it can, it can be hard to kind of do things 
in general. Um, I guess if, I, uh, if there's one big thing that's actually interesting, um, I think separating, especially at the kind of the beginning of each episode, separating what I think from what the character thinks. I can always act as the character, but I can't necessarily always think as them, if you know what I mean. So it's I have to actively kind of work out what my character's opinions would be. Yeah. Okay. I think Next. oh that and having to keep re-rolling characters because they keep dying. That's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably. Um, <laughs> uh, so what do we enjoy most about role playing, James? Ooh, um, most enjoyable thing. Um, I get a sick thrill out of rules lowering Will over Facebook mid episode. <laughs> um, it happens a lot. <laughs> All the time. I think in never terms ends. of... It just never... It's a never-ending stream. Oh, I, I in fact, have all the 5th edition rules open just now. Just in case, really. Just in case um, you need to clarify. Yeah, in case, yes. <laughs> That's the main purpose of them. <laughs> um, and all for Josh's life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's but yeah, apart from that, the most enjoyable thing is definitely just getting to kind of... No one really these days has that interesting a life, so it's nice to be able to have really massive, important stuff happen to you with no risk of really dying, and you, yeah, you get to go on big adventures and stuff. It's a lot more grandiose than real life. Okay. Just want to clarify, because <laughs> I love to clarify <laughs> things. You, uh, you speak for yourself because you may not have an interesting life, but I myself uh, spend my weekends either pretending acting to be a zombie in a secret underground nuclear bunker. Or I spend my weekends running around a forest in ghillie suits, shooting at so, people, or being so let shot me, at. So let me clarify you're something with you, Josh. You pretend, to be things, you pretend to be things that you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and thus your real life is in... Yes. It, did, like it is logic. indeed. Okay, um, yeah. What do you enjoy mm. most, then, Josh? Uh, the treachery. Absolutely. I love... We've, we've had entire... We've, it's it's got to the stage on several occasions where it has, not, <laughs> it has caused physical tension between members of the group because there was <laughs> there were so many betrayals going on at the same time, and playing someone, um, I think I think that somewhat influenced my character's decision of let's put a demon in my brain that wants to kill everyone I befriend. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. That's a fun game mechanic, um, which I think. Uh, me and Will have been through and discussed some very interesting things that are going to come up in the uh, mm. upcoming episodes. Uh, yes. Which, yeah. Every for everyone who's said uh, has been using the hashtag, uh, not just to clarify, um, but the hashtag uh, PC deaths. You you're probably going to very much enjoy what my character is capable of doing without my knowledge. <laughs> oh, I remember. Uh, just remembered that Oyha can ask a question before, which we forgot to answer. Uh, about nope. whether or not we're going to UK Gaming Expo. I think it's cut off in the stream before. Um, no, no, I'm, no, I'm not. Sorry. I'm not. I I'm might in be. the future, though, we will have many panels when we're millionaires at every major convention. Should we go to UK Expo? Is that a good thing? Let me know. Uh, so, Beth, what do you enjoy most about role-playing? I, don't, I, th I think for me it's just kind of the escape from real life because I have a really kind of crap job. Right, it's not... Um, it's not crap. I love my job, but it can be so tiring, and I kind of like the get out and the fantasy side of it. Cool. And I'm gonna have to disappear for two seconds. Sorry. Right. Don't you worry. Um, I think. I think I'd like. Wait, were you gonna do another question, Will, or were you no, gonna no, answer? No, go ahead, Karen, go ahead. We've got. Uh, we've got Oi Harkin. What's the worst game you've ever played or session that went badly or system that itself was broken? I have an answer for this. <laughs> In fact, I have two answers, which is mysteriously the amount of times that I've got drunk to the point of unconsciousness whilst role-playing. Uh, oh, uh, was Yes, they both went very well. There was one time, a couple of, it must have been about a month or two ago, when I ran a one-shot, which went incredibly well until I lost the ability to think and just told everyone what was going to happen for the last couple of hours. And there was just a time where I straight up passed out on Skype because I'd had a really bad day. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, give a little, I'll lend a little clarity to these uh, 
Wait, what are you going to do, Josh? <laughs> Lend a little clarity. I'm finding new and ingenious <laughs> ways. <laughs> Lend a little clarification. <laughs> to, to fit it in there. Um, so, uh, James um, ran a one-play, uh, one-play, one-shot uh, role-play, which was um, very good. Uh, had some real interesting points. Um, but it started going rather wrong when James realized that he was too drunk to remember the uh, characters that he put in it. <laughs> Their names, their accents, who they were, what they were there for, what our missions were, and he as he essentially had us all try and come up in, in, in a crux of it. We were all going to come together and battle. Uh, the four player characters would all battle to the death for dominance. Um, all On backed behalf by of their, their gods. Yes, all backed by their uh, chosen deity that wasn't chosen by us. It was entirely chosen by. By James, and they and were he, they were actually they were chosen by everyone else. Josh, you were just last in line, so you got the last one left. And <laughs> yeah, and, uh, well, I was happy. I got the drowned god, so I I played, and I got the drowned god after I'd chosen to play a. How old was I? Twelve. You were like eleven, twelve years old. Yeah, yeah I was an eleven-year-old boy worshiping the drowned god, and James concocted some pretty dark things that I had to do. Uh, there were murders. Was, no. Yeah, quite a few. Um, there was also a he, goat. He, there was a goat, indeed, a Gary demonically the, possessed. Gary the, Gary the goat got possessed by the <laughs> devil. Um, so, yeah, so it started going wrong and all came to a crux where James realised, A, he had the bladder of an infant child um, and constantly had to leave the room every five minutes to pee, uh, which ended up with his foot in someone's pizza that they were trying to eat at that specific moment. And uh, the B was um, James just turned around and just blurted out what was going to happen in the end and proclaimed that I'd done the best and was going to be the champion. Basically, <sighs> James was very drunk at this point, so I take <laughs> nothing he says for granted. And hello, yes. Lexel Graves. Great to see you back in the chat, my friend. Great to see you. Got any questions for us about D&D or any RPG-related questions? We will answer them. Pop them uh, in the chat. All right, enjoy feeding those cats, Harkin. Um, and no, I did not wipe my feet. <laughs> I don't think I was conscious of the fact that I had feet at that point. No. True. Uh, Solid 16 asks, Will, have you ever overruled a rules call for the sake of a storyline? Uh, yeah, most sessions. <laughs> Honestly. All the time. Uh, yeah, I, I think that a uh, story is far more important than rules. Uh, as long as it makes sense and it's more cinematic or fun, then you should definitely make that call, in my opinion. But we it's have... up to the GM's discretion. But I think it makes for a more fun game. Yeah, certainly, I think... There's there's never an issue with overruling rules unless you're playing unless two player characters are like fighting each other or something. At that point, you have to kind of, for balance's sake, stick it together quite well, stick to the rules quite well. But when you're not going against another player character, what was your oyster? Just make it fun. Yeah, if it's innovative, mm. then you know your GM should probably say yes, in my opinion. I think it comes down to how well you can sell it to whoever's oh, yeah. running running. So if you if I mean <laughs> we we've had some interesting ones where um Will uh came up with a interesting travel mechanic and because of it you had to roll a certain skill and give a cinematic thing that happened during the travel mechanic, which is really interesting and made going from A to B a lot more fun than we unpack camp. We do such and such, we eat, we sleep, we shit, we pack up, we, it just gets way too repetitive. So it really uh, sped things up and, and there were plenty of opportunities for fun along the way. But having to convince someone that uh, jumping from a horse <laughs> to take down another man is, I was a, um, is a strength test and not an agility or dexterity test. Just, um, or an athlete. Yes, it was, oh, it was very bad. Um, <laughs> And some, sometimes you have to... Oh. Josh, okay. Convince someone that... Um, what was the other really interesting one? Yeah, we had to... I, I managed to blag deception in a, um, in a fighting match. Uh, yeah. A couple funny. of times. Uh, great yeah. to see you, Mr. At One. Thanks for the question. Yes. Where, you guys, where do you guys take ideas for sessions? Straight from the head, or maybe is there some website of great ideas? Um, if you want, uh, for myself, I steal from everywhere, shamelessly, <laughs> like any good GM should. Uh, 
<laughs> the trick to art is stealing other people's art, but changing it and putting your own spin on it so that um, it's your own. I think you can take inspiration from every single TV program or thing which you like uh, and put it into your game because it makes it fun and cool. Um, but if you want to find a good website for coming up with great D&D ideas, there's pl if you just type into Google like D&D plot hooks or something, occasionally I've done that just to, if I want to think of like a, a mini scene or something, then uh, those tools are at your discretion. Uh, some kind of um, random generator stuff can even lead ideas off, or just watching a movie and thinking that <laughs> file is really cool, maybe I should yeah. do something like that. And then as long as you change it enough so it's not like, ripped from it and your players don't know, that you're exactly doing, you know, the the battle for Helm's Deep, then you know you're, you're going to be fine. Uh, but the more yeah. the more innovative and fun it could be, I think, just go for it. I think, I think you've pulled Helm's Deep twice, haven't you, Will? No, that's a vicious rumor, <laughs> Beth. <laughs> no, we. Uh, Second one was I find fields. mine. <laughs> I don't tend to come up with nearly as many things as Will does. Will tends, Will's I've certainly made some epic sagas for the like the little ideas that I've found that I've come up with. Um, I tend to have just one idea. I'll be sitting around and it'll just be like, what if there was some, what if it was all a fairy tale and it was all, it was Old Nan teaching Bran Stark about the, how fickle the gods are or something and then it just goes absolutely out of control and my mind goes wild. But it tends to be rarely I'll just get a little bit of inspiration, and it'll yeah. be great. I think a good I'm th sorry. Go ahead, Josh. Oh, so I was going to say uh, two things. One, I'm currently working on a one-shot role play uh, that you guys might even be able to see soon. Um, it's still got a lot of work to happen, but it happened. I was driving home from work, and I drove past uh, a signpost for an industrial estate near where I work uh, that was just called Cold Harbor Estate, and the word Cold Harbor, and I just thought Cold Harbor is an epic name for. And but by the time I got home, I'd got the skeletons of a, like a script and and major plot points, and I'm now going to be running a pirate role play, uh, in which I'm going to make you all die slowly and painfully. Um, the other thing, um, sometimes even the simplest of ideas, uh, if you feed that into your group. And give them free roam to do that as you will. The the insanity that will uh, sort of spawn off that because you've got even with us when you know there's only uh, four player characters. If we all put a different influence on it, it can become something far more great than the sum of its parts. It's yeah, I think that's that's think... something to note of all uh, you know games like this is that you can't predict half the stuff that your players are going to do and. <laughs> Most of the time, they're going to make it better. Such as being on a ship. In, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, goodbye, Ted. Thank you for coming along. We'll see you back on Monday for, a, for our session. Um, yeah. And we'll, everyone in the chat will be here on Monday. Oh, yes. I foresee it. <laughs> um, any, anything else to add on coming up for ideas for a game? I think I don't have the game aspect of it because I, I've never GM'd, I'm not planning on it or anything, but from a writing point of view, I think James pretty much hit it bang on the head. It's like inspiration can come from anything. I've had it from other books, um, films, TV series. Yeah. I think I've even had something along the same same lines of Josh where I've just walked past a sign. It's like, hmm, I like that. That's a cool name. And, mm. Yeah, and, uh, and I've had a whole... Um, like novel spin off I think it was one one um like a conversation I had with a friend and I was just like hmm and then I got like hundred and twenty thousand word novel written from it. If if you wanna cool. another sort of um outlet, if you take day to day things that happen in your life and then add massive uh world changing factors like an apocalypse and going to the shops can suddenly become a scavenger run yeah. or just day to day think day to day conversations that you have if you put a massive spin on them or just pull them out of your daily life and plug them into a completely different universe that either you've created yourself or that is well founded out there um, it, can, it can have huge implications and I mean sometimes it, you can write some really nice uh, organic things because you can focus on you know you've got the backdrop of this epic universe you could take like a uh, 
I, I quite like my futuristic stuff. So Firefly, ha the Halo expanded universe, um, Mass Effect, and you plug in day-to-day uh, -day things that happen to you in general, um, and you can create a story that, you know, it's got this beautiful backdrop, but it's really about the struggles of your yeah, average Joe. It doesn't have to be as epic as the world that surrounds it. It can be quite personal. Oh, yeah. Um, Misha uh, goes on to say, I just got an invite for a D&D &D game. The DM is pretty good, a couple of years minimum. Three times a week of sessions on his account. I've never been on such a D&D &D session, and I'm a bit scared. Um... <laughs> Oh, thank you for following, Mister. Thank you very much, my friend. There's two. I, if I may. Yes. Go ahead. There's. I think there's two very important kind of just rules of thumb that will get you through any social interaction of a nerdy variety <laughs> or of a role play How variety. How would you know this, James? I am a master of talking to people. Social interactions. Uh, silence. Um, <laughs> at least I don't interrupt. I muted myself. Um, <laughs> number one, when you're not being your character, be yourself and. Yeah, just try and be friendly, unless you're not friendly. And number two, when you're in character, try and stay in character, be as interesting as possible, and then everyone will love you. Yep. Uh, nerds are really nice people for the most part, and if mm -hmm. I invite you to a game, then they're going to be as nerdy as you know you are, and are going to have similar interests to you, so they're going to be people like you, and so you're most likely going to get on. I mean, you do get some people uh, who you're just not going to get along with, and if that's the case, then just don't play with them. Um, that's I um I I came into an already established uh, role play with the the slot here, and uh, it was daunting, and I that's why I was so nervous, and within the first episode, I'd gone from not having any idea what I was going to do to stealing a carriage off one of the most powerful men in Westeros, joyriding past them while giving them the finger, drinking copious amounts of alcohol after just busting everyone out of jail and framing several people for crimes they didn't commit. And that was in one episode. And I just um, it was simply came from starting off with something very, very small um, with your character... And just thinking, sort of, you got to remember, you've got nothing to lose. Oh, yeah. You can, you, if you die, just draw another character. Crazy things, if you want to do crazy things, or just be yourself. It's entirely up to you. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Um, I think we should have a look at Harkin's question. I do, Are there any yeah. real-world locations or historical periods you want to run a game set in? Brackets. I'm currently right. No, that's just personal fluff. Yeah. Real, real-world locations, and real-world time periods. I think for me, I would really like to do Victorian London slash steampunky type yes. thing. That mm. could be seriously awesome there's, to play. There's a, a brilliant system, and hi, uh, Swizzle123. Um, there's a brilliant system called Unhallowed Metropolis, which is exactly that. It's uh, steampunk Victorian London, and it's also kind of post-apocalyptic sort of uh, stuff, and it's, uh, it's really good. I think we should definitely get a one shot in on that sometime. I think you'd enjoy that. Uh, oh, absolutely. This this will be a slight revelation to the people in on the actual stream with me. I have been in secret to some degree over the past two weeks or so, been uh, kind of spitballing ideas for a World War Two role play. Mm. I'm trying to that come up with ways of seriously yeah. interesting. I'm trying to come up with ways that aren't generic. Ah, oh, you're on the beaches at D-Day <laughs> and. You murder Germans, the end. I'm it's trying it's, to find a way of taking it outside it's the box. Almost, it's almost as if someone has been watching the entire Band box set of Band of Brothers. Brothers. I've watched all of the episodes of Band of Brothers in the last <laughs> yeah. couple of weeks. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I, Vicious yeah I, would definitely, I would definitely be on board for something like that. I, I, I personally am really liking uh, the possibilities of this pirate roleplay that I'm doing, just because... I watched the Pirates of the Caribbean films. I just went, hmm. Mm. And then I was like, you know what could really be good for me and influence? Let's play Assassin's Creed Black for like four, uh, for maybe maybe five hours straight. Yeah, I can write a role play now. So that's that's what I'm I'm writing. So we should have a quite a variety. Yeah. Beth? Yeah. Uh, just to everyone, we are uh, playing our next game on Monday, 9 p.m. GMT, 4 p.m. EST. Carry on. Beth, what would you like to um, For me, I think from a history point of view, and I don't know whether Will will agree with this or not, but I would really like to do one set in Sparta. Ah. I think 
from a warfare point of view, that could be rather interesting. Don't know how the characters would work because, yeah, well, we, but we'd all be gay, and we'd have children. Yeah, who are our lovers? And they'll be, yeah. It's a tree. Isn't it EST? Uh, I think it's EST. It's check. it's Eastern Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. time. Yeah. Mm. Central. I don't know. I don't care either. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there was an interesting question, just trying to find it now. Um, I think we've missed one from Solus. Yeah, it's... Um, archetypes that we tend yeah, to Yeah, do you ever have a character... Uh, do you have a character or archetype <laughs> of a character you like to play? <laughs> um, I'm going to start this one and say, yes, I do. Mine are generally... Wait, wait, wait. Really... It's coming to me. It's coming to me. <laughs> you had a hard childhood <laughs> and went up... You turn to crime. Am I? Am I close, Beth? Am I close? <laughs> yes. Wait, wait. Um, you're forgetting. Yeah. You're forgetting. You are a treacherous ah, individual. Yeah. Of, that's. Um. But yeah, we have. Uh, I have the pretty crap childhood. Turn to crime, and yeah, I think Kaylin isn't my usual archetype at all. She's not my usual character. I um, it when I see it. My archetype is certainly. I guess if if it was a D and D, it would be a multi-class fighter, rogue, ranger. Certainly, that's what I tend to do. A little combination of everything. Mostly focusing on archery, though. Cool. Uh, what about you? What about you, now? Bill? Oh. Uh, I will answer in a second. Misha has to go. Thanks for coming, buddy, and we'll see you on Monday. Awesome. Bye, Misha. Um. I yeah, will, when you... Uh, no, I don't I... think I'd have an archetype of character or such. You've played, like to... played a lot of old men in your time. I with have, my, yeah. I've played, they, they've been kind of funny one-shots. Yeah. Com Com old comedy one -shots. Uh, I think in terms of archetype for character, I try not to get into an archetype of character. I, I quite like to challenge myself with different mm. um, stuff. I was in a one-shot a, a few months ago, actually, and um, I played a... <laughs> He was like an eight-year-old drug addict in a steampunk setting, and he was a street urchin with a uh, only spoken Cockney slang, which I had to research and look up some Cockney <laughs> slang so I actually knew what I was talking about. Yeah. And it was funny because I was playing with some Americans, and they had no idea what I was saying <laughs> because <laughs> Cockney slang was completely, completely lost on them. Um, so yeah, I don't think I'd try and get into an archetype of character, but um, you know, it can be fine. But I think it's fun to play different characters. What about you, Josh? I I don't know. I've played quite a variety so far. I, I I've played a twelve-year-old. I I can't play anyone who's honest. That's that's my, that's my archetype. I can't play anyone who's honest. It, do you? And, no, I don't. I genuinely <laughs> don't. I, I can I couldn't I couldn't bear to play the the sort of. I think um, some of the characters that James plays are very heroic and noble, and I just I couldn't I couldn't <laughs> I do it. it. I played a character that just couldn't lie. I could not do anything <laughs> but be lovely and honest wherever possible. Um, and whereas my character was a noble who was um, a thief, uh, a womanizer, uh, a drunk, and um, general terrible human being. Uh, but then, no, I completely changed him around. And I just started to, you decided to become, and a made a to become a potato again, didn't you, Josh? DJ Jazzy Josh is back on the mic. <laughs> did indeed. Phone. Did you ask any questions? Oh, sorry. My sister had. Did you ask any questions back? Okay, let's go. Let's, let's, let's answer Super Wasp King. Yeah. Because been he's been waiting to remix. <laughs> I don't. Josh Pipe just down decided now, Josh. to remix. You have a, a one million ping. <laughs> we'll answer this question and then we'll see what your mic So, like. Super Wasp King sent me in uh, some pictures on Twitter. Um. And we are at Encounter RP. If you're interested, you can send in questions and stuff there. And let me have a look at him. Uh, Jace Trodon, the thief, is a character. He is a male, human, noble, rogue level one, lawful neutral. Um, I won't go into stats and stuff too much, but he appears to carry two daggers, a short bow, a rapier, and studded leather. And what else is there about him? He... Oh no, you sent the wrong one. Never mind. 
Uh, he appears to have lots of equipment, some arrows, a backpack, ball bearings. You've got to have those. Candles, very useful. Uh, mm. Lantern. So, so, tell me, Super Wasp King. Um, what? Who is this character? Tell me a bit about his backstory if you have any. He's obviously a human rogue. Yeah. Some daggers. Well, um, well, Super Wasp King is typing. Um, Solar sixteen. The donations at the moment are just being stored. They're basically just going to go towards things to improve the quality of the show yeah. um, such as either equipment or or a new router for Josh <laughs> oh, <Potential. we've... laughs> that kind of I will, yeah. I will be Most, silencing if <laughs> at any point the um, any of the don whenever any donation money is spent will there will be a section on, in the donations section with an exact history of how much we've spent and on what um <laughs> It might, it may well just say marijuana. <laughs> Four pounds twenty. <laughs> Two whole potatoes. Yes, I can. Um, while Super Wasp oh, yeah. King is answering that, um, it's a question for Will. Ooh. Um, have you ever overruled a rules call for the sake of the storyline? Oh, talking we, about James we, rules spamming it. I think we you may have been done that one, or did I miss it? I think you you, you may have missed you it. Missed it. Uh, and the answer was I'll be yes. curious to hear the answer. The answer was yes. I do it all the time because story is more important than rules in my opinion. If it's cool, if it's fun, then do it. Indeed, cool. indeed. Uh, there was <laughs> two potatoes. We just <laughs> increased our potato capacity by two hundred percent. Exactly. <laughs> um, I also um, I understand that Super Wasp King has to type this stuff out, but I, I, yeah, with um, with Jace, I'd be curious because I played a very similar character to this. He sounds very much like someone I played, and I had a blast playing him. But um, what's his? What would you say his goal is? I think like every character should have something. Is he is he after wealth, forgiveness? Uh, does he want to go up in society? Uh, what what drives this character? Very good question. Like, are we all paused there as if he was going <laughs> to reply? Shall we? I'll find to a quick speak question. back to us. <laughs> um, Keep sending in your question, guys. Yeah, questions in the chat as you come up with them. Don't be afraid, we won't bite. Um. Um. Well, have we done this one? What's the worst game you've ever played? Yes, we talked about. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I think best answer this one. What's the worst yeah. game you've ever played? Yes. Um, I think it has to be a session, and it must have been the end of last season for Game of Thrones. Um, you know, James. Yeah, we already mentioned that one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Just got to clarify that ah, one. My dignity. You mean best <laughs> session ever. <laughs> I, I think for me, it, it would probably be losing most of our guys uh, north of the wall. Um, and just everything. Everyone dying... What do you mean, your guys? Like I, I said, lost I men didn't too. Say anything. Well, no one, no one in chat actually has any idea what we're talking about in terms of like Game of Thrones game. Um, we yeah, lost a we, lot uh, of very loved characters. Yeah. Um, but what what the problem is is we like to say to Will we have followers. And then we name each follower individually and give them a personality and a backstory and a fluffy little family and and a, and a pet dog and. <laughs> All this stuff, and Will goes, You've got 20 men. I can't be asked to remember 20 names. I will not remember 20 names. I, named, remember them 20 names I named them all, and he, he killed all but one. All but, th yeah. <laughs> yes, I had three seasons, three seasons to do it, to be fair. Only there was one character, one NPC from the very. Two, in fact, the crazy old stable master and my squire were the only NPCs that really were from episode one to the last episode. And to, yeah, that is because uh, to clarify, if Will ever, ah. killed, uh, <laughs> if Will ever killed one in particular character, we would all find Will in real life and end him in real life because he's the most beloved character we have. Uh, he's fine, Tim. I know where he lives. Lad. <laughs> um, Indeed. Yeah. So we said no. Uh, reply so, from Super Wasp King. Shall I read it in a British mm. accent? Go on, then. I think Do you it. should. Or in, in fact, my normal accent. He's obviously a nobleman. He had no okay childhood, but when he was 14, he lost his four brothers. He cut his ties to his family and took up a cloak and daggers, joined the Thieves Guild, and is now searching for the murderer of his brothers. He's a man against slavery and thinks that 
magic users should be put in towers with paladins that are truly uncorrupt. Is this character for within? I believe it is. Oh uh, yeah, I say yeah. That's really good. I think One it's thing... a reroll yeah. for if our characters die. I seem to remember that as well. Yeah, I would. I would like to know why, how his brothers died, mainly, and why is he so bent on revenge to do with that yeah also if you guys in chat have got some cool character ideas that you'd like to share with us we'd be more than yeah. willing to talk about them and... you can either tweet them in we or will... email them to encounter q and a at gmail.com yeah or just talk about them in chat if you feel we also had an idea for we also had an idea for the worst character you guys could possibly come up with as a potential punishment for us getting our own characters killed um, which could be interesting. So if you guys have got any terrible, it would just be very either embarrassing or very detrimental to play, uh, preferably not to the whole group, but for that person, um, that would be interesting to see as well. Oi Harkin asks, are there any RPGs you want but don't have yet? Um, Unhallowed Metropolis is the one which I'd probably want to have a read through. Um, I I don't have a copy of what's it called Dark Heresy. Dark I want Heresy it. I want it, and I want it now. Yeah, I've got I've got a copy of that. That's a good book. Okay, Rogue I Trader. <laughs> Rogue Traders. Yeah, we should play that at some point. Mm, as well. We that's, should. That's that's, that's definitely one we can at least one shot. Yeah. Um, what's the, uh, Eldar the Third? What is the worst system you've ever played? Well, obviously D and D three point five. <laughs> <laughs> it goes without saying. Am I right? <laughs> to be fair, I think when it comes to um, systems and stuff, I don't like. I don't. I think it's just me, but and the way I play and the way I run games. But I don't tend to analyze systems too much. It tends to be if I'm having fun in a group, and I'm like, it's a good group and it's a good story, and we're having fun, and I like the system because I like the group. Um, so if you have, I think if people have really good experiences in some games, they really like that system. And if people have bad experience in that game, you know, you might blame the system that is it's being played under. So, yeah, three point five I didn't get along with. Four E I like a lot. I mean, it's a good system, and five E seems to be quite fun so far. And uh, apparently we've dropped out again, boys. Oh no, we're back. Those were his only friends that he had growing up. So he's bent on loneliness and vengeance. He's very twisted and angry, but righteously so. So I guess, yeah, it would be kind of a chaotic chaotic good, chaotic neutral, one of those two. Certainly a very interesting character idea. I think if we accumulate all of the character ideas that get sent in as backup characters, yeah. we can perhaps just roll a D, yeah. however many there are, and that would Don't be the character. Don't forget to send female characters in too. I think it's just as fun if Beth gets a male character, or if we get a female character, so yeah. Or if we get female characters, indeed. Okay, uh, so here's a point um, that me, as a GM, uh, has tends to tend to do, at least. I tend to limit my players to actually playing their own gender. Um, especially, I think on stream, it's gonna, that's more of a rule. Um, but I tend to have that general rule, because um, I think when you're playing a game and there are female characters involved um, I think it can get a bit odd sometimes with yes. guys playing girls I'd, uh, I, yeah, I'd I'd... It, and I think it's a little bit immersion breaking as well um, a little bit immersion breaking if a guy is a very deep voice and is playing a woman I think that can be something for the players as well so I, I can play a woman all I want woohoo <sighs> well, um, well uh, and I also think that on stream it's probably best to remain within our own genders to avoid any <laughs> confusion. Um, but yeah, let's just and, uh, something that I tend to do. And therapy um, for all our people who are following us. True. There's um, a uh, question from I Salt. I don't think I should be playing Gothnar, the male half orc barbarian. It's I'm pronounced sorry. Grothnar, you uncultured oaf. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is, it is a proud name. I play a woman, I am a man. I play her like Mary Poppins. Is that a euphemism or is... <laughs> I played her like, I'm, like Mary Poppins. <laughs> I dread to think. How do you feel about men who always want to cross-play? A um, little bit uncomfortable? Depends, depends on the motivation. Yeah, I mean, like... I guess it's fine, but often... A bit odd, I think. I mean, personally. I, pers I personally would... I'm 
I'd feel comfortable playing a female character, but we won't go into details, but there's a friend of mine and Josh's who's currently playing a female character in a separate role play, and I think because he has so little understanding of how humans in general work, it's got very weird very quickly. Yeah. But certainly, this, Especially yeah. in this game, it's something I, I want to... Want to avoid, and of course, because like everyone here knows each other, like probably be okay uh, in our group. But I think in your group, if you're just going into a session, I think it can be a bit odd. Um, yeah. Mm. But I mean, it's your GM's call, cool, uh, and it's your call cool as well. If you think you can pull it off, then go ahead. Uh, it can be done well, and when it's done well, it's good. Um, but I think it's easy, easier not to do well. You can go very far astray. I've I've heard one story mm. of that was initiated by a, a gender-based. Quarrel on a in a role play that ended in like a full on bar brawl in the pub that they were role playing in. Yeah, sex, sex and stuff is, is you want to avoid yeah. it. Uh, it. You want to avoid. You... I think as a GM, you want to avoid anything that might cause tension within your group. Uh, like yeah, ships. Guess, yeah. To summarize, and if, if you know you can do it well and you're with trusted friends that aren't going to be weird, go right ahead. But if otherwise, it's probably not worth it. Unless you want to take that risk. Yeah. I had three quick points. Uh, one, just a shout out to my boss for hashtagging, just to clarify, because you're a dick. But <laughs> I love you, Ant. Um, and your Point fired. two is <laughs> indeed. <laughs> um, also, um, I think it comes down to how serious the role play is. If you're if you're doing a serious role play, I wouldn't. I, I I'd say if you're comfortable with it, and you feel like you can carry the character, then that's your prerogative or it comes down to your GM's decision uh, but if it's a less serious thing I mean um, for example uh, not to dwell on it too much but the one that me and James are going into the Warhammer Fantasy role play you don't get choice it's just signed by dice at the beginning of the game yeah. all character creation is done on a dice throw and um, that's just been hilarious the whole way through um, but yeah, it's as I say, it's up to you at the end of the day. The third one was there was a question from Solar Sixteen. Uh, everyone, what's your favourite accent? Please show an example. But I would like to expand that slightly and see what's the best the to the guys in the call. What's the best girl's voice you can do? And to Beth, what's the best manly voice you can do? <laughs> yeah, I get often when I. <laughs> At least when I role play a uh, female character, I just tend to do a slightly lighter voice because I don't want to go full in to the. Oh, I'm a girl. Hello. Nice voice. Hello. Ooh. Uh, Ooh, I tend to just God. do a slightly lighter voice as if I'm slightly more posh. So it's not too weird. I think the best girl's voice you've done well would have been Carrie. Yeah, I'd go with that. Yeah. Um, so do the voice. So do she, the voice. she was a Dance character um, in the game, previous game, and she was just very straight talking. She'd be like, hey, how's it going? Good. Great. Fuck you too. And then she'd walk off. Uh, and I think she was just quite a natural character. She felt like... She, actually, she felt like the, the most... Um, less, the least scripted character because everything that I'd say with her would just be... came off the top of my head, essentially. Yeah. And so a lot of the conversations actually flowed quite naturally, um, which was nice. James? Our swizzle says you guys sound like old high class British moms. Thank you. I think Thank you, I, Lord. I think I certainly have the most unfortunately well spoken voice. I don't think there's much quarrel with that. Which is why it and fitted you don't quite help easy. Yourself be... with terms such as <laughs> Such as uh huh. Oh, such a... <laughs> Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> I don't think you help yourself with phrases such as uh, "unfortunately uh, well spoken" and uh, <laughs> "I can't." I literally I cannot help. We do have to admit we do take we do take the piss out of James for it, um, just, because he is unfortunately well spoken. Well, your your turn of phrase. Um, yeah. So you have easy, a way with words, James. The easiest way, uh, the easiest he accent is, is obviously my normal voice, which which sad. it fit it fit very well into my uh, into my previous Lord character. I think <laughs> I'm struggling with. I I don't know how what you guys thought of Duncan's voice in the Monday's episode, but I tried my best to sound vaguely gruff. I don't really know how it came out. Um, probably <laughs> he not just well. Like you. <laughs> Well, we'll go with it. 
as I unfortunately I actually my original character for D and D was meant to be a dwarf with a Scottish accent, and I spent hours trying to learn how to do it, and I just couldn't. I kept just going into like Irish and then Aussie and then back to Essex and then yeah. Uh, in terms of accents goes, uh, hmm. can do a little bit of Scottish, just a wee bit, a um, little bit of Irish, a little bit just. Sorry, I'm sorry, Josh's Irish accent. I'm sorry. Well, he's got a slightly more northern one. He's like, oh, I'm going to murder everyone and my life shit. Whereas if you're slightly more from the south, you just say everything's great. Um, my, my family's burned down. And Solus has said, don't do the accents yet. Your video has gone. Uh, I don't think it has. It's still on stream for me. It's still on the stream for yeah. me. I think you might want it's to. It's still reload. telling me it's gone live. Just, ref just refresh. Just refresh, yeah. my friend. If you've lost the video, press F5. Uh, Eldar III, uh, back on his uh, women point, was the only issue that I'm having is that two pieces in my group are infatuated with me. Um, All of them are infatuated with me, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. They well, I, get, I think if that's like, are the players uh, or are the characters? Because if it's characters, I guess it could be funny, interesting. But if it's players, you might want to, you know. Deal of that out think yeah think very very carefully about stuff like that I, I tell you right now it's really difficult uh, yeah, whatever you do don't start like, relationships with someone <laughs> you're in a role play <coughs> yeah because, whatever you do don't do that it gets a bit awkward um, especially, especially when, when he ends up chopping your character's head off with a great sword um, yeah he, he still hasn't lived that one down <laughs> nor, nor do I need to because you are in fact dead um, no, I, I, I just think it comes down to um, role plays at the end of the day, all about having fun. So if you feel like that's going to be difficult, you just walk away. If not, if you feel like you can make it work, then great and uh, all the better for it. And yeah, just uh, the, the, remember there is a line um, between the real world and what you're, whatever universe you're role playing in and just because, for example, there's a lot of flirting going on in uh, the real world doesn't necessarily mean they won't stab you in the face in the fantasy and vice versa. Um, just because your characters seem to get along really well, you know, be yeah. careful because it doesn't always translate. Uh, super but awesome. other than that, sorry. Yeah. The one thing, the one thing I'll say is, just if you if it is in character, um, just be careful because some people can get. A little bit iffy with in-character relationships as well because Basically. it can sometimes get a little bit too close yeah. um, if you know each other us. you can kind of get away with it but with people you don't know I would say just err on the side of caution a little bit yeah. the general rule that we ended up with was as soon as anything slightly awkward happens just cut to black like that time that my character slept with Randy Baratheon <laughs> um... how many times though? Oh, that's not going into it. Super so, thing. So in the, channel, you don't in the Twitch channel description, you're going to put dead characters and backup characters, right? So new people know who's going to be there when someone dies. Um, I was going to say keep, probably keep not. Secret. Keep yeah. them secret. Yeah. Um, but he he is right here where he says the tree is going to crush Kale under its weight when it gets reanimated, right? <laughs> Definitely. No, that isn't true. I'm That's sorry. Already it's, it's, been, it's, it's been written in. It's when the tree turns into an end and we realise we're actually in the wrong world. Mm. Um. All the right. Ents exist in D&D. Yeah. They exist in this world, yep. You've never met one, so you wouldn't know. Uh, Curses. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a question earlier. Mm. Um, it was from Oi Harkin, I believe. Um, what's one thing that would make you nope out of a game? Um, Intolerable players. Yeah, players, mostly players. Or um, a taboo issue in the game. Something yeah. like rape. That would just be straight that's, out. That's, yeah, that's be. one big no that we just have absolutely in all our games. Yeah, I mean... It, it doesn't happen. Mostly it annoying could be players. something in character or out of character. Yeah, out of character yeah. players. Uh, and, yeah, players, people you just can't get along with. Uh, in character, it would be... I have a really boring story which no one is doing, or you know, something like a, like I say, like a, a taboo issue which you wouldn't want to go into. And I think like that's that's mm. quite. Um, yeah. How intolerable are we talking? Well, like I say, my line would probably be 
Um, yeah, rude, irritating, obnoxious people. I just tend not to surround myself with loose people. Uh, and people. That's, that's a good thing to note about... The brilliant thing about D&D games is if you're not having fun in your game, then just leave it and find some other people. Um, because you're absolutely free to do what you, what you want. You shouldn't be stuck in a game that you don't want to be in. Um, huh. So just leave. I, uh, For me, I think one of the big ones is people who just do... Thank you for following, Peter Not Sorcerer. want the story to... <laughs> well, just um, trying to say people, people just don't, don't want, want the... the uh, rest. Yes, uh, so, I mean, and that that's, uh, can be GMs. Um, I've personally been in a role play where Ooh. every body we looted, uh, we just had a sign on the body just saying, uh, fuck you, uh, which was just really uh, annoying. Yes. Um... Because it comes a techno remix. Boys. You would expect people you looted to carry simple things, like yeah, money you would or expect people to carry simple things. No. And yeah, other other characters who just do that, so they just decide to break the in-game mechanics by just pissing you off. Um, yeah. Now, Super Watch King says you yeah. you you didn't rule out plain sex as a taboo that will make you nope. So is that in character or out of character? In character, if it makes sense, I've got no problem with sex as long as it's not yeah. graphic and detailed. Uh, like out of character, black. I mean, uh, if it's right <laughs> in front, I walk into the session or just, there's just a gangbang on the table. Then I, you know, I'd probably just join in to be honest. It's got to be done. <laughs> hey. I think, uh, the the big issue with the taboo things is that if it's, it's in, I find it impossible. If there was something such as what Will mentioned, I've got very strong feelings about it. As most, I think all four of us and yeah. and Ted, I would assume as well. I cannot go on that. I just wouldn't feel comfortable playing, so I wouldn't be able to play in character. We everyone would have a bad time. Hey Norexus, so how's it yeah. going, buddy? Hey Norexus, we're <laughs> having a light-hearted Hello. chat here. Uh, another thing, I I was in a. Uh, group once with a player and he was an older chap he was actually a father and he um, he was telling me about a game he was in and he he couldn't be in it anymore because uh, a couple of guys kept making dead baby jokes um, which were all fun and games but he he just had a newborn child uh, and it was and, and he told oh. them and he told them you know guys can you not and they kept on doing it kept on doing it, and he just had to leave um, because it was just not um not nice from <laughs> Norexus, I think I just walked in at the wrong moment. I just heard gangbang. No, you've just We're walked planning in at the session. exact right moment, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, intolerable issues. Just don't go near him uh, as a GM or as a player if you know it's going to make people uncomfortable. Yeah. Also, if you just make a mistake, I mean, just just say it out. Tell him out of character that like you're uncomfortable. Tell the GM you're uncomfortable. Yeah. I, say, I don't want this to come up anymore. And a GM, that's his job to say. Okay, no more of this. Yeah. I think me and Will very early, like uh, when we first started role playing together, we were just we just both happened to mention it in conversation, talking about how dark Game of Thrones is as a world, and then we both, would, it, fortunately, instantaneously just went no. So easiest way of solving it, things like that. Don't immediately just leave. Try and talk it through with people, and then obviously if they don't kind of support you as a decent human being, then obviously it's the time to go and find friends that aren't assholes. Yeah. I think it's Shall we more, have? Probably, sorry, sorry, after you, sir. I have just one more point. I think it's probably hard for harder for girls to find uh, games with nice people because I think a lot of guys who are playing D and D are a bit nerds. They're not not used to women, uh, and <laughs> unlike us, of course. Yeah. Oh yes. We're, <laughs> we're to be honest, I have had that just walking into Games Workshop and. Yeah. Having every guy <laughs> in the shop just go the shit. There's a available. girl in here. <laughs> um, Believe it or not, we are not sponsored yeah. by Ga- Games Workshop. <laughs> but yeah, it's the whole shit. There's a girl in here. What do I do? And I have had friends that have said, mm, "Sorry, don't think you can join the game because I think it will make other guys uncomfortable." And it's like, oh, okay. Um, I was offered to join a game about six weeks ago, yeah. and one of the guys turned around. I, di- I didn't know, I've never met the guy before yeah. um, through a friend and he was, he was just like, I can't do it if there's going to be a girl here and it's like, oh, oh. okay, that's, that's that's really, really cool because that <laughs> was a Victorian alert. London alert. steampunk OMG, one. a grill yeah, it was a, vic- <laughs> it was a Victorian <laughs> London steampunk and I was really looking forward to it and he turned around and was like, look, I'm sorry but 
he got here first. Like, oh, thanks. Means a lot, mate. <laughs> it's like, wow. Mm. But. Well, there you go. Uh, what were you going to say, James, before I so rudely interrupted you? I was going to say, any more questions, people in the chat, or shall we find one from our list of questions? We've I've got a couple from our list of questions Ooh. that okay, I don't Beth, believe Okay, Beth, fire us a question at random. <laughs> wait, wait. Um, Nerex is free. <laughs> Lord, I had that problem. Girls walk into Games Workshop. Well, human. Don't bite. <laughs> um, yeah, we had one earlier from Solus. Is that how does your character generation work? Background first or stats? Background for me. Background every time. Background and then work your stats around your background is what I've found. Yeah. Yep. Um, Josh? Yeah, Josh. Are you stuck Ooh. in the internet? Uh, no. Um, Good. I don't think so. Um, let me know if I do get stuck. Um, yeah, no, I'd <laughs> say background. Know. Mainly mainly because my last two characters have, I've just written massive amounts of background and then just dumped like a 500 page novel of their backstory on Will and said, there you are. And Will's like, but have you statted them on a map? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> well, I actually, it's funny. I actually got Kaylin's backstory uh, <laughs> about ten minutes before we started our session on Monday. Um, to be honest, I knew the backstory. I just hadn't told you. Um, yes, which was an issue, but it was fine because I knew So I it. did do the backstory first. Yeah. It was just kind of a basic backstory before I started her. And yeah. and by be, being honest, I had the story about two days beforehand. Me and her were sitting in my car in a McDonald's drive-thru, and she just went, "Shit, I haven't done my character." <laughs> and that was that was her planning. Yeah, I. Uh... This is how organised I am, guys. Um, oh, there's another one here. Um, can I? Can what I... in your characters? Let, let James, what? what? One last James, thing to add. Oh, sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I'll let you off. Um, one one thing that I do tend to do is I'll make my character, that I'll do the background, but then I will spend a huge amount of time making horrendously broken ways to build the character later on. I'll like plan that I've already planned Duncan up to like level six, um, just because I like also making broken characters to the point at which Will took the hand off of my Archer character because it got too silly and I couldn't not one shot people. Uh, yeah, uh, cool thing to do with your characters, I think, is. Uh... Hey, Kildor, good to see you again, my friend. Um, one thing to do with the character, I think, sometimes is if it makes sense of the backstory, then actually, like, penalise your own character. Uh, I think it's often fun because I think characters who are, like, super brilliant and excellent at everything can be pretty boring. They're not like normal yeah. people. And what interests me is people uh, in role playing games. Um, people do fascinating and ridiculous things. Uh, whereas heroes do fairly standard things. You can predict what they're going to do, but normal people are not perfect, and I think you should have that in your character. Yeah, I, uh, I've i certainly learned that from our last kind of shebang, and I've, I've certainly, as you may have noticed from Duncan, kind of panicking a lot, and at one point just straight up hiding um, and running away from things. He, he's certainly got an element of cowardice and kind of self-preservation. He's not a hero by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I think I think everyone's got elements of that. I think that influenced quite heavily how uh, I put uh, Moldark in. Um, mainly yes. because. <laughs> oh God! You <He> caught. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like he's like the butler from. Uh... Never mind. I'm gonna go off on a massive tangent into. Elvis Just to Wilson. clarify. Just to clarify. Um, Yes, no, I think I think that came down to I I think it can be very much as Will says, make it much more interesting for you if uh, your character has f a, a flaw that defines them. So, for example, demon in my brain that could kill the entire party and screw me over entirely. That sounds like a fun cup of tea, and it gives you something else to compete with. Um, so there might be parts of the story which are really you know. Can, can be quite boring. It's just you going from A to B. Obviously, not with Will because everything Will says is dynamite and interesting. But uh, for others of you out there, you might enter a situation that's just entirely boring where all the other characters are just doing day to day stuff like healing themselves or sleeping off injuries or a lot, a lot to do with recovery, um, which is what D&D &D is teaching me. Uh, and yeah, you might want 
the, the opportunity to, hey, maybe I'll just go off and deal with the crippling anxiety I've got, or the uh, the the best the best character flaw I've had was in uh, one of James's one shots. Uh, one of my crippling fears was badger rain. If it starts raining <laughs> badgers, I am paralyzed with fear. It came into the story as the best thing before I was drunk. It was written in far in advance. Uh, Oi Harkin asks, how much creative control do you like players to have compared to the GM? I've seen a whole bunch of, uh, bunch of rage about how Dungeon World gives a lot of control of your plot to the players. I don't know exactly the specific about Dungeon World, uh, but I like to give players as much uh, creative control as they would like. Um, uh, you'll see coming up in this series that there will be a lot of decisions that the characters can make. They can do whatever they want, and <laughs> it's your job as a GM to uh, improvise on the spot. And I think improvisation is probably the, the best thing you can learn as a GM to do, because if you want to be playing a really open world game with a plot, but not on the you know not absolutely railroaded into one uh, decision and arc, then I think that um, you need to be able to improvise because these guys, as you will see, will do some absolutely unexpected and ridiculous <laughs> things. I will have no plan that will happen, mm. and when I give you this look, that is when you know that I am absolutely improvising. Um, so, <laughs> luckily the, the players can't see that. So. Yeah. There were, um, certainly even when we were coming up with our characters, when I came up with my dwarf originally, there's a certain, there's an element of dwarf, some of the dwarven culture that I, uh, that I came up with. I know Ted's influenced some of it, and there's, there's yeah. just little bits that we've added into the world just by, we'll write our backstory, and then it, as long as there's no major issue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, James wrote uh, Previously, in his uh, dwarven character concept, before he before he decided to play uh, Duncan, um, he sent me like a thousand words of some backstory and like a scenario that his character had been in, and it involved a certain event in the world which happened every year. And now that is part of the uh, you know the canon, and that's in the world now. So I think uh, you know do as much as you can. The players certainly um, add. <laughs> better things to the game often than you can think of yourself so definitely they are your primary resource when it comes to uh, ideas in the world and um, another sparkling uh, I example um, of this is I uh, in my backstory for uh, one of my other characters I, I played a, a, a thief and um, I needed him to have some sort of criminal background mm -hmm. so I wrote up some criminal characters that I could associate myself with and uh, one of them um, was a clairvoyant and very dangerous organization that was I barely touched upon called Rook um, <laughs> which was uh, an organization of like a criminal underworld that uh, employed pretty much everyone in uh, for those of you familiar with the Song of Ice and Fire and King's Landing and Westeros um, it, they, op they operate everything in that is illegal in King's Landing and their their influence spread ever so slightly to the extent where when I introduced it in season two it was a minor piece of my backstory fluff and by the end of season three they are now the main antagonist who is screwing us over at every possible opportunity and has had thousands if not hundreds of thousands of our men killed yeah. mm. it's, uh, it's like, I think... a, like I was saying before with <laughs> ideas for your game um, if you're trying to think of like a, a plot hook or something, get your characters to write some backstory and see what they come up with, and <laughs> it can you can just bounce ideas off that and it can escalate. And it yeah. like what? And actually, that was uh, the whole idea. That was just like a, a side thing. And actually, as we played it, it kind of worked more and more into like, yeah, this, <laughs> this is a good thing. This could be bigger. This could be bigger. And it kept going higher and higher and higher. And then I was just like, yes, I've got a story. One I thing think I just it worked in the... pretty similarly at the end of season one as well when my character came in. Mm -hmm. The mm. the main bad guy ended up being my character's dad. Um, right. And that kind of sparked off the whole of season two for her especially. Um, the whole not portrayal thing. As a GM, I would, I, I would definitely, definitely convince you to get all of your player characters to play people who are either orphans or just for some one reason or another have no idea who their relations are because if you ever want a nice little thing to slide in there you know that person you just killed turned out he's your brother 
Um, and that's now, how do you amazing. feel? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, good question from R Swizzle One Two Three. Yeah. Have any of you had to drop a player because they weren't pulling their weight, <laughs> i.e., lack of RPing? Um, so I tend to only get people into a game who are good at role playing, and I think would be good role players. But you can't really always predict out of character. Um, interactions with people because people are people and however well you might think you know them you can't always know how they're going to get along with three or four other people that they've never met before um, so yes we have had one player who we had to drop before and if you need to do that it wasn't for lack of our ping it was for out of character reasons which we won't go into but um, if you need to drop a character do it as nicely as possible tell them reasons why um, the GM should be involved in that decision of course and uh, you just got to be nice to people. I mean, if you can't play with them, you know, it's not nice telling someone that you don't want to play with them. But it seems very childish, doesn't but it? It, does, it seems horrible. Uh, you feel kind of bad for doing it as well, I think. But um, if you need to do that, then, then yeah. And I think it, it, it needs to be done well, and it could be done badly pretty uh, pretty easily. Yeah, um, I so, think. So deal with that person as a person, no, no matter how badly they've behaved. I feel like... I feel like giving that person a chance. Like, don't, yeah. I don't, don't say just the. These are the reasons we're cutting you off entirely. Like, you should always find a situation where they can flourish within the group, um, which we've all tried to. Uh, if we ever uh, yeah. run into difficulties, I even, I even went out of character massively to try and, uh, yeah, try and make that character kind of make the person feel included. Which, yeah, you've always got to try your best to get them in. Um, but yeah, yeah. And in terms they... of lack of RPing, um, no. Uh, I think if someone's not role playing enough, then it's your job as a GM to get them role playing. Um, as long as it's the type of game you're running. If you're running a really combat oriented game, I know some people that do, uh, then role playing isn't the biggest thing on their agenda. Um, but I try, and I think I've been fairly successful in getting all these guys to role play pretty well. Partly, you know, most of the work is is them. Uh, but your your job as a GM is to run the game and get them role playing, and there are plenty of ways you can do that. Um, yeah. But yeah, inspiration in D and D. Yeah, I Perfect think example. I think yeah. our That's, swizzle yeah. has pretty much got it. Where you try to fix a problem before it becomes a problem. That's very true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just try um, and put them in a situation where they can flourish and they can do what their character does best. So, and yeah. then if it doesn't I, work, it doesn't I work. I don't feel Ted would feel bad about us talking about this but when he joined uh, Ted is a pretty shy guy he doesn't like talking too much um, and he's not uh, he's not an extrovert he's quite an introverted person as a lot of people who play D&D are you know we're nerds we sit home and look at D&D um, so when he joined uh, he didn't speak much wasn't too much role playing going on and then we had to in we you know me as a GM had to find situations which help him role play the players also pitched in um, it's also their, you know, part of their responsibility to to enjoy the game more, to help people enjoy yeah. the game more, uh, and role play with them. Um, so yeah, I think if someone's not role playing enough, it can be really easily fixed. Uh, although of course you do have some people who just don't understand what's going on. Uh, in which case, try and help them. It's probably not the right game for them. Yeah, maybe it's not I the right game. I for have, them. I have an idea. We are we're we're getting quite a lot of questions in the chat at the moment. So just to bring us up to speed. Um, I want one sentence answers for all of these questions, one at a time. Uh, Super Wasking brought up a good point very quickly. Uh, well, he made a point which I'm going to turn into a question. He said, a basic flaw, psychological problems, one at a time. What do we think in one sentence of kind of touching on the issue of mental illness or psychological problems, something like having a character with PTSD or any number of things? Beth starts off because I'm sure you'll have an opinion on this. We're, we're also, um, just to it... note, guys, a lot of these people are care workers and the like. <laughs> yes, almost um, half the people on the stream are. I think the most interesting one for me to play would be um, someone with severe anxiety issues. Okay. That was a sentence, that one Josh. Word, one sentence enough. <laughs> uh, you didn't say full stop. Um, Josh, one sentence. What would you think on the matter? I think you have to be very... Um, Things like that have to be done, I want to say tastefully, but that's probably not the correct word. Respectfully? Uh, but, uh, respectfully, exactly. You have I'm, to... Oh, by the way, guys, um, I am Josh's professional thesaurus most of the time. This is indeed true. 
Hey, I Irish, feel like that needed clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, yes. Respectfully. Is that a sentence? Yes. Will, sentence. Uh, mine would be... If it's okay with the group, it's okay. Do it sensitively. Do it respectfully. Be aware yeah. that people in the group might not be okay with doing that. Talk to your GM about it. Talk to your players about it before. If it's okay, then go ahead. Mm. Uh, Oi Harkin, well, we briefly touched on this, but systems that incentivize role playing, are they good? Will? Yes. Beth, are they good? Mm, don't think I've played one, I wouldn't I? Josh, what did you have for breakfast today? <laughs> That's the room right off. I had coffee. Hey, good. forever player, uh, how's it going, buddy? Very important question now from Solus16. At everyone, who's single at the moment? I am. You. I'm, I'm a lonely man. <laughs> am... Everyone else on the stream is in a relationship. Yep, I'm afraid so, my friend. Sad face. How's it going, forever player? Good to see you, my friend. Uh, Hello, how are you? He's, he looks like he's Hello! Oh, we got individual hellos. That's yeah, I know, nice. indeed. No, that is very I like this, man. I like him. By the way, guys, get, get Thank more you, Forever Player. Chat. Yeah, Forever Player um, and Irish Drive. If you have any questions, and any, indeed anyone else in the stream, feel free to uh, ask them. We will answer them to the best of our ability. And uh, D&D related, RPG related, or just real life, any questions that you might have, we'll be happy to answer. Oh, oh, how James, you just got a date. Work? What? You just got a date from Irish Drive. Fantastic. Right. Email email your details to encounter Q&A at gmail.com. So, continue. <laughs> um, moving swiftly um, um, we, 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 we had chaperone. one from... Wait, we had going, one from Sol Sorry, 16 earlier. Oh, we got through all of them. Yeah. Um, okay. I've noticed. A, a question that springs to mind from Oi Harkin's comment. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Will, opinions on Anne Robinson. <laughs> Beautiful woman. <laughs> Beth? Anne Robinson, yay or nay? She's scary. Oh, also, also, watch the uh, video of Anne Robinson watching porn. It's brilliant. <laughs> Seriously, I don't don't ask. Ask. Just, <laughs> just Google. Other, um, <laughs> other plastic surgery women are available. Um, Josh, opinions on Anne Robinson. More importantly, I'd like to see Anne Robinson's opinions on things because I don't think she can move her face anymore. <laughs> so I'd like to see her. Express. She really needs to vocalise them. She can't express emotion anymore. <laughs> Um, well, this has gone entirely off the rails in 60 seconds to abusing celebrities. Uh, Don, <laughs> They'll be watching. Don Bro plays. What's your advice to somebody interested in getting a game but doesn't know anybody who plays? Well, Don Bro plays. It just so happens that you should go to the Steelborn Legion. You should go to www.steelborn.com mm. and you should go over it's there. It's a chat. Yep, there. I'll just put a little note for you there. Um, <laughs> exclamation mark joy uh, and you will be able to find a game there they will find a game to your uh, time zone to your liking to your setting that you'd like they're really helpful over there and I suggest go find yep. them um, yep. alternatives include um, going down the local nerd store and asking people although that's a lot harder so I would say do it on the internet unless you really want to because it, it means you actually have to talk to people yeah Mm. I found my first roleplay club by talking to nerds in Games Workshop playing Warhammer. Yeah. So you can find, there's lots of different ways. I guess there's a very much a social taboo. You can't just go to your, your normal, normal mates and just be like, does anyone know any Dungeons and Dragons groups? Yeah, exactly. I mean... If I did that, I'm in a college full of girls. I'm literally the only man on my course. <laughs> yeah. If I did that, I would never be able to speak to anyone again because yeah. they'd all shun me. <laughs> nerds are scary, says Irish Drive. Um, yeah. Well, yes, I take are. that as a, it's as because a personal like... offence. <laughs> I, I think I think the thing is though, you have to understand that nerds are only scary because they all claim that they are level eighty-one wizards and warlocks, and you have to look past that thin veneer yeah. and realise well, they're just people. people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I'll have See, you know, this, this is exactly easy. what I'm talking about. <laughs> nerds and geeks are awesome. That is true, Nerexus. That's very true. He's got it right. Um, where is it? What do you find? Quick question. First, one sentence, back to one sentence answers until people keep spamming questions in the chat. Um, what do you find the most fun setting to play in, Will? Tough one. Um, it depends on the group I'm playing with. It, it, I don't know, that's a, that's a hard question to ask because I think it's very dependent on the group you're playing with and... Uh, at the moment, I'd like playing in the world of Atonica, which is my own homebrew world. 
I like it's discovering it along with other players. Well, I like I like discovering new worlds. I think yeah. I think because yeah. we spent three seasons Definitely. in a Game of Thrones, we all knew that know that yeah. series and books some, and world really. Some well. of us more religiously than others. <laughs> um, I think it's nice to get into a different setting where people don't know exactly what's going on, and you can discover that. So I'm having fun doing that at the moment. Mm. But there's, I mean, dude, there's like a million settings you can play. Yeah. Um, have fun. That was a, that was a lot of commas in that sentence, wasn't there? I was there for <laughs> one sentence. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to kick you from the Skype call now. <laughs> uh, Beth. <laughs> Beth. One sentence. Um, I really liked the playing? Westeros setting because I, I know it, but I am really enjoying discovering Atonica. I think it could be quite cool. Full stop. Josh. <laughs> I don't really mind what setting I'm in. I think it comes down to more the people I'm in it with and the scenario the more life-threatening and cinematic it can be, the better. Full stop. I have, uh, Oi Harkin has just put a very, very good question, which I'm going to answer because I've realised I've been asking all the questions on behalf of the chat. Um, Oi Harkin says, At everyone, pitch an alternative history setting. Change one thing, one single thing about history. Give us an idea for how we might have a game in that setting. My one would be, the year is 1066, the Battle of Hastings. The English, well, the Saxons win. The English win. I like you, James. I like you too, Beth. This is why we've been friends for three years. Um, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I would uh, have the English win the Battle of Hastings and slay William the Conqueror and all his men. And, main, and yeah, the, Fre the Normans never take over England. What happens? It would change the whole of England it would as be we know it. Yeah, it would be mad. Oh, okay. be so I've got one. Um, we lose the Battle of Britain and... Nazis invade. What happens? That could be fun. Oh, we all speak the, German. The entire plot of Iron Sky. That's other, really annoyed me other, because other Nazi spin-off films are available. Yeah, essentially, mine would be I would I would have uh, Churchill not survive uh, one of his many dances with death, and uh, yeah. yeah, indeed. Um, oh, going going for an alternative to that, I think. Uh, I would I would have the the Cold War boiled over mm. and went wrong. Well, that'd be good. And that would be good. Mm. Um, that's, I'm pretty sure that's a plot of Fallout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think there's a theme here. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ben. War. Uh, for me, war is always the same. <laughs> Whenever we'll change. I don't know, Ben. I think 1066 could be a really interesting one. Um, war. War Other changes. than that, I would say the Roman Roman Empire not collapsing. Mm. What would happen then? What if the Italians they, it's, it's, a big, it's a yeah, it's a big. It would be a big one to play with, but that could be seriously interesting. That would be cool. Um, I've got to get through some <laughs> other things. Kildos says, for some reason, I find it really hard, uh, really easy to talk to people in local game shop, but I, talking to random people online, the mic is really scary. Um, yeah, I, I guess it can be actually getting into random. I, stuff. I hate my voice, and oh, hearing myself it says the is actor. no. I mean, I hate your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Will. <laughs> Luckily, I have friends who inspire confidence in me at all turns. <laughs> um, no, uh, at the end of the day, remember: um, if you don't like it, instead of uh, having to come up with an excuse um, to leave a conversation in real life, I always find uh, leaving conversations in real life can be that you can just walk away. If you beforehand throw an imaginary back grenade directly at the floor in front of you, just go, back grenade, and then walk away. They're so busy looking at the floor, you're already gone. Um, but online, all you've got to do is disconnect from a call or block someone, and that's it. And then you can find people who you're more in tune with as opposed to settling with the people that I am currently lumbered with. <sighs> Constant. He's like an overworked <laughs> cart mule. Indeed. Uh, Irish Drive says, you guys are funny. <laughs> Thank, <know>. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's all we've got going for us. Yep. Um, Speak has, for yourself. Has any game got out of hand, i.e. words of hatred towards others? Not in this group. Um, I, I say uh, words of hatred to Beth all the time. Well, yeah. Yeah, yes. but I know you love me, so it's acceptable. I've. I think no. I think first season. Um, we had another guy in first season. Um, that oh, didn't really Christ. end well. 
other. Yeah, you know, things, yeah. things got mm. a little bit nasty there, but it, I, I think it was all a bit. That was that was just personal. That was just control banter. Yeah, we just didn't I think really it was have personal grudges rather than. That, what we had in yeah. common with that player was we knew Will. Apart from that, we didn't really have any reason to spend time together, so it was a little I'm bit. Going to the same university as Benter. Well done. Um, um, you've chosen well. I had. Uh, I have that in common with him. I, oh, oh, I had two oh, things also, to say. Sorry, sorry, Josh. Oh. Carry on, mate. Um, one was um, yeah, I've I've been in one before where it's uh, it's actually been due to people not getting along in real life and it's has ended reason, up in. Though. For, well, but I mean, it's ended up in full-blown rows that have mm. just broken down entire roleplay groups, which was not fun. Um, well, thank you, me? Priceless anonymity. Anonymity, thank you for the Sorry? Was that me? Was that, that the thing Dolphins. that happened? Um, awesome. Thank you for following. And yes, it was you, James. And the was other the thing was, uh, I noticed just then that... Uh, buh, 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 uh, Forever Player was. Oh no, no, it wasn't. It was. Uh, Press Nick, Nick Saris. Nick Saris. Fallout based D&D. Nick Saris. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Fallout based uh, D and D. Um, I started sort of working through it with a friend of mine. Some of it is absolutely fascinating. But all you've got to think about is original Fallout. If you played it, it is just that. But instead of doing all of it computed for you, you've got to do all the math yourself. But yeah, my so, anonymity made a good point that it does have its own game system and it is very good, if a little bit expensive. Yeah. Do, do we have a name for that for people in stream? For, I'll um, find it. Nerexis, so we can send it over to him. Um, one of, one of yeah. the best perks, I will say, to pick, though, is um, if you pick Bloody Mess, which uh, anyone who's played the games knows that it does. You do extra damage, and it also means that your enemies die in the most horrific ways the computer can possibly imagine. Get that perk, because then every time you kill someone, you have your, your GM has to come up with the most gruesomely horrific ways of killing someone. I picked it just to annoy the GM. It was, it was beautiful. I found I, I found Fallout kind of pen and paper. That's a thing. And... Sorry, what was that, James? It was. There's Fallout pen and paper. J.E. Sawyer's Fallout role-playing game. Those appear. Oh, Exodus, which is apparently something to do with Fallout. Any of those? By the looks of it, J.E. Sawyer's Fallout role-playing game seems to be. Yeah, by the looks of it, that seems to be the most legit one. Okay. Uh, Nerex has also asked previously, any advice for those of us who are completely new to D&D? Uh, Kildor made some good points here. Read a bit of the things, look at interesting classes, races, and just play. Look up everything you need to know during the adventures. It might be slow. What's my advice? And thank you, Irish Dry, for following, my friend. Uh, I've, um, I've never I will played say D&D. That... Yeah, it's the same for me. This is my first Dungeons and Dragons oh, list. I, I guess he's saying uh, a role-play game. So, yeah. Yeah, and um, saying that I was new to role play with um, our Game of Thrones session as well, and it was difficult, but especially having people like this lot, um, it was a heck of a lot of fun to get into. You. And yes, that too. But I think your best bet is be yourself and be your character. Um, yeah, that's Irish, all you can do. Irish Drive in the chat has just said, "I must say, I've never played D and D." Well, my friend. Um, if you want to either go to the application form below the stream somewhere, if you want to have a hunt for it, or email encounterqna at gmail.com. At some point in the near future, and by near future I mean in the next three to four months, I am going to be running a, at least a couple of guest one-shots where people from the stream, when we've got a bigger viewer base, will come on and I will GM some one-shots. And yeah, if you wanted to give D&D a try, I'll certainly be running a D&D 5e one-shot. So, yeah, drop us an email. I've, I've just realised we absolutely um, pronounced sl- it Nizerus. Nizerus. But I love the way you find so many ways to say it. You could just say Nix. Okay, I'll do that because, I'm, you know. I'm going to call him Norman. Uh, yeah. slash her. <laughs> I don't know. Is it him or her? It's got a pink name but and kind of lots of soft set. I don't know. I don't know. Your gender also, is your were, you born in, were you born in 1942? Um, Kildor, it's really funny, technically I've never played D&D, I've only been a DM. Um, well, you've got, you've got half the experience there. Uh, I think DMing is one of the best things you can do. But sometimes when you DM for a really long time, you just want to play. Um, so I'll give it a go. 
Um, yeah, good, good guy, definitely. Forever Player has uh, just said, uh, spoiler alert, I'm not here for the game, but to actually pick up your awesome accent so mm. I can sound smarter. James, if you would be interested in voice coaching, I'm sure we can work I, out. I yeah. mean, I've spent a lot of time sounding slightly smarmy and using big words to you hide the fact that eventually. I'm not incredibly intelligent. Mm. Um, <laughs> Indeed. I, I, I get past the point I, of yes, wanting to uh, punch him in the face. There's a, there's a variety of different sort of posh voices. There's James, which is genuinely posh, but then you can just take it to I whole was new born in East just... London. I was born in East yeah, London. Right, mate. <laughs> no, I can't um, even do a Cockney uh, yeah. accent. I just sound like a posh person trying to do a Cockney accent. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, that's what you are, James. Um, Curses. Um, <laughs> Nizaris is 27 and a girl. So no, she wasn't born in 1942. That's a lie. She's not a grill. They don't exist. Well, welcome. Uh, it's nice to know I've got another girl here, to be honest. <laughs> Apart from James. James wow. doesn't count. <laughs> As I either. I literally cannot win. I'm just an amorphous blob at this point. <laughs> A small James amorphous blob. Is, yeah. James has to asexually reproduce because James is one of his only species. Let's well, not get into this because I'm going to end up saying it appropriate James thing. is shoulder Cooper. Sol the 16 previously said the Roman Empire doesn't fall. Don't know what you quite mean. Yeah, that, I don't it, see it, it now. Uh, that was when we were talking about the historical... There's these centurions things. outside <laughs> <laughs> saying something about I'm rounding sure up all Dr. the Christians. I'm pretty sure already did that. <laughs> Yeah. In which case, that might be a Whovian quote. In which case, I direct you towards the Bethman. <laughs> there are no girls on the internet. That's I, right, Harkin. To be honest, I, I was wearing my, my <laughs> Who's Clues t-shirt earlier. I'm kind of gutted I changed it now. Um, Lloyd says you're not posh, James. Good. Middle yeah, class. <laughs> Actually, honest, he yeah. does say you are middle class, though. I am. I'm upper middle class, technically. But <laughs> Harkin, there are girls How on the you? internet. I'm By the definition, I am. You. Look, I can't help being better than you, Josh. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, okay, Harkin, questions. Then... Questions. Banter. Back onto the topic of tonight. <laughs> yeah, Harkin, <laughs> there are girls on the internet. Our canes I hate to break around. the tea. You are fake. <laughs> Cap a face. I do, I do like though there are only bears because no one knows you're a bear on the internet. Well, I guess you just bared all. Just to clarify. And that's the end, boys. Kill yourself, <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Josh, we're gonna have to ask you to kill oh. yourself on camp. Um, I shall uh, just uh, commit right now. So Wait a minute, Will. <laughs> I've got. If you, I'm just, oh, have you got your katana on cam as well? <laughs> His, yeah, I know Irish Drive. This could not possibly go wrong, viewers. It's okay if we just <laughs> smash our monitors at each other. <laughs> I'd just like to point out that I'm... Despair, guys. Katana. <laughs> back, on, back on topic. Help me, Trevor. No Katanas, <laughs> help me. <laughs> I'm surrounded by... Forever player. I'm not a bear. Forever player just validated my joke and therefore has just validated my life. Thank that's, you very that's much. That's the point at which Josh life is. It's it's that low at self confidence. Um, <laughs> Validate me. <laughs> okay, get some questions in guys. Commit and Sudoku, Josh. Honorable Mitsubishi. Actually, honorable Mitsubishi. <laughs> right, well, see you guys. Uh, finger some questions for us. Uh, let's talk about a topic which we had pre-prepared. Do we have a topic which we prepared, James? Um. I think we've actually, so we've said what, what VODs, streams, and podcasts. Why did we choose to start streaming, Will? Ah. It all, ha it was a misty mountain I cold. All that, we were, that, that past week ago. We were playing Chivalry Medieval Warfare. And as I, as I clove the limbs off of a man, I turned to Will and I said, we should stream roleplay on twitch.tv. I actually seem to remember it differently. I seem to remember myself suggesting the idea because I have this dream that I should be a DM for a job. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think I initially possibly suggested it. Um, I thought there was something hazy about my story. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to the end of uh, a, season, a third season of Game of Thrones RPG, which I've been DMing. Uh, and I'd recently be starting to watch D&D streams and join them, and I thought we could bring something new to the scene because we do... Uh, focus on role playing a lot more than some other streams which I've watched. But 
Yeah, I thought we could do something new, and I thought it'd just be fun to talk to you guys. People of the internet. It's certainly it's a it's a weird but very good, very nice experience. We were discussing this after the first episode, that it's just so so nice. As much as normal role play is great, it's amazing having just like eighty. Wait, no, it wasn't eighty. It was like sorry, eighty subscribers, like forty people though, just show up and watch us live stream things. Yeah, mm. it brings a whole new it's level of enjoyment. showing people enjoying watching us enjoy ourselves. That it was quite could interesting. Be could be it was true. <laughs> Careful. But... <laughs> I'm, enjoy I'm enjoying myself right now. I'll have you know. <laughs> I Josh, um, I think... my katana skills so that Oi Harkin stops judging me. Uh, uh, James uh, throws a katana rather well at trees. Shut there up. you are. Um, and <laughs> also got beaten up by his ex-girlfriend who then tried to kick me in the balls. I feel like uh, our, our level of katana fighting might not be on the level. So it might be so um, slightly. <laughs> I, I personally think it's a lot of fun to uh, share all this craziness with other people um, mainly because we have uh, a lot of as Will says like you never know what we're going to do and often uh, me and me and James have had private conversations where we've just been like in the next great battle this will happen this will happen and this is how we'll counter it and nothing happened the way we thought it was going to happen several people died that we thought were going to be fine and other people we thought would certainly die just didn't show up and yeah so it's um it's a lot of fun because you guys get to witness the utter chaos that is our four minds in a blender yeah chat has just dissolved into talking about katanas and ninjas now so i hope you guys are happy with yourselves. Um, it's okay josh josh should we get the I rifles josh. out should we get the rifles out next solus says will you can gm for a living uh, i'd love to that would be the dream, mate. that would that be the dream. the dream i would love to do this for a job but i mean it's Unlikely, but I would it's love to do for it. at least another two months when we've got a million subscribers. Yeah, we tend to go. Hello, Paraplu Fox. Ah, Paraplu Fox, my friend. How is it going? Good to see you again. So you live a night. Um, have you got a question for us, or any questions? Indeed, we'll answer yes. them. Any Literally, burning questions? From we will answer. If you ask it, we'll answer it. Indeed. Anything. No judging. And I, okay. I mean <laughs> anything. Yeah. And we we won't we won't judge anyone if they have a question, of course. Um, yeah, we tend to. Um, stream from 9 till 12 uh, every Monday and every Thursday. Uh, Monday, of course, is the uh, game show of the Broken Kingdom, and Thursday is we're in the Dungeon Master Tavern having a pint and enjoying chatting to you guys. Um, you've got CrossFit at 7.30. Bit. Uh, what, are your, <laughs> what, are your stream, what are your stream times? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you just found them out. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Send in some questions. Have any, has any of us got any things we'd like to bring up or just general RPG related news or topics or questions? Salt my document. Mm. We've answered all eight. I think Solus asked earlier mm. do we ever do um, drinking streams or drinking yes. sessions? <laughs> all, of my, all, <laughs> all of my streams are drinking streams. <laughs> it happens. Um, it really does. Gets me through the day. <laughs> Uh, in all seriousness, I think. Yeah, uh, maybe, we, we maybe try like... not to drink too much. It feels like a fun session, but for, in terms of the stream, yeah. we want to try and keep it as kind of it's professional. I think, I think stuff like that, I mean, as far as the stream's going so far and our story that we've uh, certainly Will's planned out for us, uh, I think we sort of want to do it to the best of our ability. Getting drunk can sometimes be fun, but at other times it can completely um, uh, side Annoy everyone. Everything. Yes. Yeah. Um, but then again, I I have three empty bottles of of best wine here. Um, so yes. I that you're meant to be saving for tomorrow night. But hey, and oh. let's not have a domestic on right. stream, boys. Okay. <laughs> Kildor. So <laughs> before you reach that amount of subscribers, any spots open to cash out? I mean, play with you, <laughs> um, James. Mm. You can answer this one because you've got a. You spoke about this earlier. Yes, I spoke about this earlier. I don't know if you were in, but we are doing guest. Uh, one shots of various kinds over the coming maybe three to six months. We don't have a huge amount of planning behind that yet just because I don't know what I'm going to be doing in my life, uh, let alone what extra time I'm going to be able to spend doing this stream. However, 
certainly to some degree there will be a lot of guest in- inclusion uh, and most likely it will be through me running some sort of one shot show yeah. so keep an eye out for that check the description there's a way of applying for stuff or email in to encounter q and a at gmail.com which I think is also in the yep in the, in the, in the or schedule yes yeah. um, um, yeah. we have a question here from uh, para I am so bad at pronouncing names. Parapluie Fox, I think. Parapluie Fox. Uh, I do apologise. Flocks. <laughs> Flocks, indeed. I just add in letters wherever I want. Um, I do apologise if I mispronounced that. Um, would you like to name a villain for one of my campaigns, guys? I, I already went. Villains. I already went to Digby Chicken Caesar in honour of that Michelin web look, a fine British comedy show. It just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> He has a sidekick uh, called Ginger. Never forget. Okay, uh, Nerex, uh, Nix, because I can't say your name probably. What is the better version of D and D? Three point five or five E? That's an easy question. Five E. Oh, Bill. Yes. Don't get well started on three point five. <laughs> Boy Harkin's idea for Parry Bluey Fox's question was prolapse, the sodomizer. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> oh God. Interesting. He's everyone's true enemy. Being drunk might hinder the quality of Cesaro's drive. I agree. That's why yeah. we're going to try and avoid that. That's why we don't get drunk. Jabs. Um, hey. Shut up. It happened once. <laughs> it happened twice, let's be honest. It was enough. Once is more than enough. Two uh, was excessive. Look at Acquisitions Incorporated. They did it for a living at PAX. I know they do, and that would be the dream to, to that do is, that. That would be we brilliant. Want. Um... Yeah, maybe one day. Who knows? I think Parapluie Fox has just read the um, <laughs> suggestions. <laughs> name. Um, I'm Actually, going to leave that hidden. with you, Parapluie Fox, because, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay out of that one, sorry. I, you, you mean I, you're going to stay out of the prolapse? The I personally yeah. think the best villain name has become from uh, Wolfenstein, Mecha Hitler. Yes. It doesn't get much better than Mecha Hitler. Old giant one testicled robot with mini guns for arms. I mean, can't really fault that. There's nothing. I can't find anything wrong with it at all. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Irish Drive. I dreamed a dream. <laughs> it could be about anything, but. <laughs> what did you, Irish Drive, in the chat? What did you dream a dream of? Well, you know, after we exchanged numbers earlier, just 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 text it to me. Um. Call of Cthulhu campaign, certainly Oi. it's on the cards. Yeah, most, most of these ones are on the cards. I mean, it might get to a point where we can just uh, ask people to vote for a one shot like they'd like to see. Yeah. And we would do mm. that. We'll put like a straw poll up or something, and yeah. whatever gets the most votes, we'll do a one shot of it and then take it on yeah. the list. So eventually we'll have done a one shot in most things. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely like the sound of that. I think, um, yeah, obviously you have to give us time to write a story because there's like this is the whole reason we're here to show you. Uh, the best sort of role play that we can we can pull up. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, but I also think it would be very nice to do that to get Will involved as a player character, and for us to uh, enact our revenge of murdering him as cruelly as we possibly can for all the times he's murdered us. Can I us. just put it out there that I think I'm slowly falling in love with Irish Drive because he. To be fair, quoting. he did. Act, he just misquoted Lame is. But, yeah, but However, it's close enough. Close enough. He's trying, and that's the important thing. Yeah, he's trying. He's it, done very it's, well. it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> Stern. Uh, w- Sorry, uh, World Josh. War 2 D&D start going. Well, we were actually talking earlier about uh, different mm. historical settings that we'd like to play, and I think James said that he'd like to yeah. run a uh, World War 2 type game. One which shot. Would, yeah. would be cool. Mm. Yeah. I would, I would be, I would definitely collaborate with James on that and give him plenty of ideas for us. You're all collaborating to die. with the enemy. I am collaborating you with the shot, enemy. Don't you? <laughs> Indeed, I do. No, I think with, with within a World War Two environment, it would have to be a one shot, simply because otherwise, you unless you fight an entire world war. Yeah, and then everyone knows eventually. You know that the like. Whereas you, there, there are missions in World War Two where you hear about uh, it was like Arnhem, where the British failed hard, or you go Normandy, where it, overall we did well. So you'd Market have to take Garden. one in which went badly. We're just going to name World War II operations so that people <laughs> acknowledge the fact that we've played Medal of Honor. Um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, so you'd have to do it in one, like one mission that could go either way. And you have to see what happens. 
or you just go silly and have Mecha Hitler as the enemy. Exactly. Irish drive, Irish drive, we do not hold it against you, your lack of Lemez knowledge. I, I personally am a massive fan of it, but I've only seen it once, and it was a very, very long time ago, and I've completely forgotten all of it. Yeah, I love Lemez. It's possibly my favourite musical, musical of all time, and I know most of the words to most of the songs. I know I, all I of cried. the words to all the songs. Hmm. This is now me, the Lemez Lame is <laughs> Indeed. Between uh, that again, and Jesus Christ James, Superstar, I'm a little bit of a geek. James James has therefore also memorised uh, the entire song from Skyrim in. Uh, Devakin, Devakin, now look, say lots about in. Yes, exactly. It's, in the don't get me started on things that are useless <laughs> for me to know, but I know anyway. Uh, Nick says a World War Two D and D as a commando secretly taking down major objectives. That'd be fun. Oh, that that's cool. interesting. That's a good idea. You're the GM well, now. You could, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, take, take, a, yes. Okay. take the reins. G <laughs> no, how, how um, it? Parapluie Fox Xavier. says, um, I have run a World War II game before. It started out as a one-shot, and then it became full campaign. Fun times we had. Were had, even. Ah, excellent. That sounds pretty cool. Rust is an interesting system, uh, interesting World War II system with... With oh, Nazi gorillas and other weird things. Are they like I would, I can guerrilla get, warfare or literal gorillas? Oh, oh, God. God. It, it is spelled literal gorillas. Mm. I like the idea because I, well, I like the fact that um, I don't know if you ever played the uh, Command and Conquer series with uh, the um, not Tiberian's War. What was the uh, Red Dolphin. Alert? The dolphins yeah. that had bombs. Yeah, dolphins through. and bears and stuff. And I mean, they they used things like dolphins to attach limpet mines to subs and my other ships. So, completely plausible that that gorillas could be trained. <laughs> I <and bet>. <laughs> <laughs> World War Two D and D is Dad's army. Yes, that would. Yes. Oh, but, oh my God! I'm actually stealing that idea. <laughs> Irish Drive. Uh, this is now a formal inter in intervention, invitation. Um, I'm stealing that idea, and I'm running it as a one shot, and you're invited. I don't know when or where, but you're coming. Would this be before oh. or after the date? During. That is the date. <laughs> it oh is the God. date. Your that's date will be a dad's army setting. Oh, that's that's for. I'll dress up as Captain Menorin. Menorin. <laughs> you can be Pike, because they don't like it up them. Oh God! And now the song move is on, stuck in my Move head. on, move on, move <laughs> on. I'm sorry, Power Pluey. There, <laughs> I'll try that again. I'm sorry, Power Pluey. It's a difficult Who name. Do you think we are killing? There's, there's too many syllables. The Allies literally had a magician in the North African front, Jasper Maskelin. That's Dibs. some knowledge. I want. I want to play a magician in World <laughs> War II. Yes, you know, that would be Jasper phenomenal. Maskelin. <laughs> He's very masculine. I, that name as well. Very masculine. That is just, that is just you couldn't write this stuff. <laughs> I might get caught in the gate on my way to a date. <laughs> it's always, uh, <laughs> always a danger. Always a danger. Mm. <laughs> Should we talk about some D&D &D stuff? I feel like yes, we're... Yes, yes. What's that D&D? What is D&D? &D? Uh, I know nothing of it. Um, oh, okay. So I, I, so I had one that I was um, thinking of earlier. Was... Um, Solo campaigns with only one player, and party campaigns with obviously groups of players. What do we think are the pros and cons to both? And uh, yeah, basically. I certainly think that having one player in any situation is always going to limit the amount of fun that you can have because it is ultimately a social game, and so the more people, the better. And that's in my opinion. Um, I can see the, certainly the merits, especially if you, it's just like you and like, if, if you're not particularly sociable or maybe you're just bored and you've got one mate around so you do it. But I, my attitude is usually to a degree, the more players, the better. Joshua. I think, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm not a fan of uh, single player. I've done, I've done some stuff and it kind of, uh, I've done some interesting role plays which ended up where no one ended up as the GM. So it was sort of a joint decision, everything that deteriorates pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, one player versus, uh, essentially versus the GM and everything the GM can throw at them, um, I think it is essentially for me. It would just turn into a question and answer sort of. You question know, this su thought. this situation this situation occurs. How do you respond? Okay, in response, 
this situation occurs, whereas in in a multi-character uh, D&D or role play, you, you get, okay, this situation arrives, um, what do you do? You say that. Oh, my, my friend over there has punched a bear in the bollocks. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, dear. <laughs> Beth. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't even know how single person campaign or session would really work. It just it sounds really boring. I like having people to actually socialize with. Yeah. It doesn't happen very often. Yeah, no, I think uh, it's the sort of thing that D and D is best as a party. Uh, certainly, that most role playing games are. Some systems would probably suit it better than others. And I guess it's the sort of thing if you only have a couple of you playing, then. You can only find a few players, and that would be quite good for you to uh, to to do that. Um, I like Super Wars King group. says, "I am bored of this Q and A. It's a shame you guys can't do a campaign today." Well, I well, we have problems. only got yeah. approximately twenty minutes left. I was so. going to say, yeah. shall we shall we fire through some quick fire questions yep. and kind of round things up? I agree. Quick fire questions. Let's go. Um, hey, Harkin, do you hold the one true faith and worship the dice gods? Dice gods all the yes. way. Which also ties into uh, Nick's... No. Nick, how do we pronounce Nick's... Uh, Just call Nick's, him Nick's. Nick's, Nick's. We know Norman. This. Norman here asks, do you have a favourite slash lucky set of dice? Yes, I do, and I think everyone in this uh, Q&A can attest to the jamminess of my dice rolls. Mm. Um, with those dice, and I, I have been known to sacrifice dice to the dice gods. Josh, do you have lucky dice? Um, no, I have particularly unlucky dice that hate me with a passion, and I will never change from them. Beth, Beth do you have lucky dice? Um, I have a set of dice that whenever I've rolled with, they've not been too bad, but roll 20 seems to hate me. <laughs> roll 20, I hate so. Yes, uh, it's true. Soul 16, have well, you ever played a game? Oh, me? Uh, no. Have you ever played a game where some of the PCs, I think, are actually undercover NPCs? No. I think the one shot, not necessarily, the, the, the last one shot I, I ran, I gave everyone the false impression that they were an undercover NPC to varying levels of success. By the end of it, obviously, everyone knew. Um, but no, I don't, I, I've, I don't think any of us, have you, Josh or Beth, ever played something where it was a secret NPC? No. 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 It's an interesting concept, though. Indeed. Um, we have no amount of statistical education last contact with D&D. Favourite version of D&D, Kjeldor? 5e, every day. 4e. Or 5e. Probably fight me. Fight me, IRL. <laughs> Josh and Beth, I guess, because you've only played 5e. Probably 5e. No, yes, I hate but... it. Yeah, I, hate it. <laughs> I hate it and I want to stop. <laughs> Nick's Prince. telling us off for calling a Norman. Well, if, I'll, I'll take the blame. Maybe if you weren't didn't, didn't have such a hard to pronounce name, it would be easier. Prices if you can just email into Encounter Q and A like a pronunciation guide for me, and I will, uh, I'll actually attempt it. Process anonymity. I've done single player sessions leading up to a campaign, sort of a Dragon Age Origins style. That's cool. Or as little mini quests, usually for the thieves, thieves, thieves robbing places. That sounds like fun. Yeah, that can be fun de depending. I like for it. character I like building that. sessions, I think it kind of makes sense. Yeah. D. D. Goshman, when looking at game Ooh. settings, do you prefer well fleshed out worlds with a lot of lore and history, or more homebrew settings with super open canon that the players can change? Right. I I immediately have something to say on this. James, our resident law, uh, lawyer, who will rules lawyer everyone into the ground. Vicious rumor. Uh, we, <laughs> we we came out to a um. A Game of Thrones setting, uh, or as James will skewer me for saying, Song of Ice and, Fire. Of Ice and Fire. There we are. Even this is this is what I mean. I mean, it, I like playing. It's always cool because you've got a lot to reference with. If there's a pre-established law, there's loads you can branch off of. You can sort of work into your character that they were somehow related to this epic event that happened. And if like you could even do it in the butterfly effect of like, had I not like. Um, look the other way as a guard for that. Maybe um, someone wouldn't have died that was massively important to the story. Or you, you know, there's there's loads of potential there. 
but there will always be that one person in your group who will remain anonymous, who may or may not constantly be above me in the Twitch chat, um, who is just obsessed with getting everything perfectly right. At that point, um, Will, Will has it's been beautiful. phenomenal. Will has been <laughs> phenomenal in, um, in it, passing... What can I say? <laughs> in, in, phenomenally modest, should I say, um, in uh, bringing down sort of his. Oh my dear right. lord, we've had a donation. Everybody stop. £2.50 from Parapluie Fox. My friend. Uh, thank you. You. Yeah. That's another trip to Ibiza. That, <laughs> Indeed. Just, just one more. <laughs> wow, thank you, Parapluie Fox. Parapluie Fox. I, I need to. Yeah, we need to. Important. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We shall now refer to Norman as Rachel, as it is her actual name, apparently. And yes, it is easier, because I can't, you, I can't read. <laughs> um, quick fire question, Keldor. Okay, so taking fifth edition, what's your guy's favourite class? Will. Mm, don't really have one. Beth. I'm liking playing the sorceress. Sorceress. Josh. Uh, I probably would say rogue, but I'm liking warlock because of the demon insanity. I was going to say um, most likely paladin because there's so many. You can obviously you can have a oh. fallen paladin. There's a lot of there's a very broad story and gameplay uh, choice in terms of different abilities and combat styles, etc. Uh, but I'm certainly enjoying playing the ranger at the moment for very similar reasons, in fact. Um, and I think... Will, could you at least say why Jace has the mark? Um, we'd have to talk about that Ooh. when when and if uh, he were to enter the game. But that's something to think about. You can pitch me some ideas. Um, I think, shall we Shall we sign off? Yeah, I think we, should probably, yeah. we probably should. Um, we're going to be back on Monday at the same time, 9pm GMT, 4pm EST. Oh, oh! Right, I have an announcement to make. This will yes, also be. What's your this will be. This will be separate. Oh, you'll love this one, Beth. I think I told oh, you about yes. this last night, Josh, at the pub. Did I mention? You that? said many things. You were. I said many. Had copious amounts of alcohol, but yes, that I know exactly. Has. Um. Uh, Rachel, yes, the Q and A will be on YouTube, I believe. Will will it? They will indeed, yeah. Rachel. Um. So, there's going to be a competition. We know how you love arbitrary numbers, and so. Uh, there are two prizes to be won. The top prize being 100 gold, the second prize being 50 gold. For those of you that don't know, type exclamation mark gold in chat. You can see how much gold you've accrued. Uh, I, for example, have 972. The DM bot has 2,394, etc., etc., etc. Will spent a lot of time the other night coming up with new ranks. I um, so, the competition, in essence, I want you to come up with one of two things. Either a meme or a Microsoft Paint level piece of fan art. It can take you no longer than four minutes, we'll say, four minutes to put together and either email it into encounter Q and A at gmail.com. Uh, at gmail.com, yeah. Or put it on I'm going to make a forum page on Steelborn for those of you who are applying to Steelborn to or join just, in the their games. Or tweet it to me. Yeah, tweet it to Will at and Encounter RP. Yep. I will be judging the best and second best meme slash MS Paint level fan art, and you will receive gold, which will be useful later on at some point one day. So and yes, get those entries sent in. I'm expecting beautiful results from all those involved. The memeier, the better. Exactly. Indeed. indeed. Uh, so yes, we're going to be back 9 p.m. GMT. Back to our campaign. Back to playing the game. Um, Monday, 9 p.m. GMT, 4 p.m. EST, same time every week. We're going to be back. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Is this something that you guys would like to see regularly, or would you prefer more campaign regularly, or would you just like these to be every now and again? Um, let us know because uh, we only know if you guys tell us. Um, tell us what you true. want, what you really, really want. Yes, um, I want it. So yeah, feedback from you guys. You like this kind of format? Would you like it to change? Would you just like more? Game, um, that is that is. We've got question. we've got game for days. We got mad mad game. We do. Even though Joe, I, he's got mad game. Trust me. 
It's, it's, we can we can attest to his mad game lovers. But yeah, thank you to everyone who came along. Lloyd, Solar Sixteen, yeah. Keldor, Parapluie Fox, Rachel, aka Norman. Um, that's a thing now. Ray Harkin. Uh, there's so many. Super Wasp King oh, can't be forgotten. Uh, everyone. Rachel Evil says, GM bot. Oh, he's he's a legend. A Reg says a chat thing every now and again would be cool. Cool. Yeah, I was thinking. Drive. Harkin reckons Q and A works better than us two of them. Good. Input. Yeah. Maybe do it once a month or so, and next week we'll come up with something fun to do. Thank we, you for following, D. Yes. Goshman. Thank you very much. Everybody. Welcome, welcome to the clan. Yeah, if you've got any ideas what we could do on a Thursday, let us know. Again, yeah. email in, yeah. Twitter, Tweet, email. forums. Oi Harkin says, like, uh, weekly but not monthly, every couple of months. Uh, Kilda says, I really like this nice small talk, although I fear at some point you're out of things to talk about. Very true. Yeah. Uh, still, thanks for asking a lot of questions. That's okay, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I agree with you guys. So, yeah. perhaps on Thursdays we should play campaigns. Yeah, we'll certainly. I am as long as we're all okay free, that. that's totally fine. Yeah. It might come down to oh, obviously people's availability. I cannot guarantee every Thursday off, though. Yeah. yeah. So, so, that's certainly, the issue, because I've already got Beth, Mondays off. Maybe if Beth's not here, we'll take the role play somewhere else but we'll always have a show on a Monday and a Thursday of some point yeah. uh, of some type even Monday it'll always be the Broken Kingdom campaign for the foreseeable future yeah. Thursday we'll come up with something and we'll try and let you know before it happens if by it's... spamming every forum under the sun and tweeting and, and tweeting it. Know in the so yeah follow us on Twitter as well so that you know what's actually going to happen yes and indeed. email me in because I keep checking this inbox and I get really lonely because there's no one there you I'm don't so just email James either. You can email the rest just of us. That's all like more all contact, all contact, just straight to the email. <laughs> Indeed, he might. Or tweet me. I'm around to talk to it all. <laughs> and often, if you just come into the chat and say hi, I'm probably around. So, you're yeah. never, you're never, you're never true. Yeah, around. James, don't forget your date. I won't forget my date. Irish Drive. We're, uh, we're on. We are it's chaperoning. Good. It's going to be me, Will, Beth, and it's James. Gonna be... You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes change. Thank you so much for the donation <laughs> again. Um, Parrot Blue Fox, I really appreciate it, my friend. Ed. You're on the Absolutely Hall of Fame. Um, just is... above little, between Lil B Base God and is it Dank Memes? Yep, Dank Memes, Drassi, Dank Memes. and Solar 16, all absolutely fantastic people, as are everyone in chat. Thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, this is our we, second time we ever do, streaming. You do get lonely. And the fact that we were. Um, Number one D and D stream tonight as well was pretty cool. Every, every night. Every night so far. This is you guys, bad. you guys make it all possible. You actually, That's... you you really do. So I hope you can join us again on Monday. Um, please do come along and talk to us. I expect there'll probably be a few more of you because we won't just be talking random stuff. Um, mm. And maybe on this Thursday slot we could just do some kind of one shot stuff every now and again, even if we can't get all the players in. Um, so we'll we'll look into that. Thank you for. Your feedback. Yeah, Irish Drive, this is our second time streaming. We have over 80 followers, which is 82 brilliant. at this point, I mean. 82 followers, brilliant. And, uh, you know, there's about 20 odd of you in the chat tonight, which is actually brilliant. Um, Will, and, uh, Will and I did actually discuss an idea. Um, you guys are our favourites. As well as doing this kind of Q&A where we talk generally about shit and katanas, um, me and Will were going <laughs> to just run a two man podcast about kind of the finer arts of GMing, Will being very good at the narrative element and me being number crunching crackhead with the very interesting much, way very I, on my hand. The yeah, best way jo Josh, at this yeah. Which I came up with slightly drunken last night is uh of course. basically James is very good at coming up with the underlying rules and mechanics of it and then Will will throw a beautiful tapestry over it and make it a work of art and together it all just comes together. So if you guys are looking for something that um has a lot of depth to it, but it is also uh easy, simple to run and you know, um once you've got the basic rules established, it's not so much it comes down to your personal preference, everything will work itself out for you if you if you set the rules up properly so James is great for that and Will will help you blow people's minds with your twisting turning treacherous oh I didn't <laughs> see that stab to the face mate. yeah so yeah. the idea I've just come, sorry. Like, sorry, go yeah. ahead. I've just come up with the name of the show it's just come to me if we just call it just the tip GM tips with Will and James <laughs> are we all everyone in the chat can we get votes on that is that, is that an acceptable name 
Um, Super Watch King, have you guys heard of like YouTube or SMG4? If you're not, get together, Google Party sometime and look up Freddy's spaghetti. I'm I gonna Google this and make I'll sure it's not like porn or anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah. What on? Um, oh no, this is this. Yeah, okay. the idea would be to run a kind of uh, games ma Dungeon Masters kind of <laughs> workshop to get you guys to help making campaigns and adventures and stuff. So we'd be doing a lot of work in like one tw uh, roll twenty and that kind of thing. And I don't know if I want to look at that or not. <laughs> you've got you've got two you've got two views or it you've got two votes up for your uh, just the tip idea so far. Wow, the chat has spoken. So yeah, I think we are done for tonight. We hope to see you guys on Monday. Thank you so much for hanging out, everyone. Uh, we love you all. Yeah, Especially remember if you everyone who's donated and followed, we love you all. If. Uh...